from a neighboring business onto the roof. That's video from the south side of Zimmerman's building and a tornado you can also see. And that building is Feedlot Service Company. The next day. So not until this morning did I realize how close this thing was to coming on top of me. Uh, you'll notice this building in the background here. That tornado touched down right in this area. In the first part of my video, you'll see this building as I turn on this gravel road that I'm on right now. I turn and I go up this road and this is where that tornado started touching down. We've got power lines down. We'll, uh, we'll get some footage of the back area of the highway that I take that all the power poles are just snapped off. We've got debris down everywhere, guys. Uh, this whole road is shut down. Obviously, you could tell by the signs right here, but up on the corner up here on the house, it's gone, it's leveled. So I take this dirt road, I turn right here on the beginning of the video, and I'm going up that hill, right? And then that storm is coming this way. This is where the tornado dropped down, basically right over top of us. And uh, it picked back up and hit the town of uh, Neola, Iowa. There's uh, some heavy damage down there. Pretty big trees are down in this area. Uh, that I didn't realize this until I got down here this morning. If you guys take a look at my car, this is what I found this morning. Now it's just dust, but this is from the cornfield when I was uh, getting pelted with all the mud and everything. It just was just hitting the car. It's nothing too severe. Uh, this was probably a very light tornado, but I had no idea that I was this close or endangered. There's a lot of stuff that you guys can't see. There's a farm out there that it barely, it missed that. Uh, I'm taking this in the afternoon the next day because by the time I get off work, I probably won't be able to get out here and see with all the, the daylight will be gone because it'll be late. But this is the, the gravel road that I was racing on to get to that paved area. Right when I turned on, I started the video and I didn't realize that this thing was really right behind me. Uh, when I got over through the valley, when I was talking about going through the woods and I had to get through this valley really quick, that's when the tornado was coming over. And you can tell this big tree, she's rooted pretty good. We'll try to, uh, we'll try to get some video of the power poles for like a mile down the highway I traveled. They're all snapped over and laid over. Uh, this is just, it just blows my mind. This is the first time I've ever been really that close to anything this dangerous before. Uh, I didn't realize how close I was to, uh, to really severely getting hurt. Now all the power lines in this area are down. And uh, the funny part was it was humid. It was tornado weather, guys. It was 70 degrees, hot, muggy, still, and humid. It is a frigid 25 degrees right now. Uh, I'm wearing a light jacket, but I am freezing cold. See, I'm switching my hands because I'm just like freezing cold right now. There's people traveling up and down. They've got the roads closed. But I don't know if I can zoom in on this guy. No, I can't really zoom in, but his, uh, yeah, he's pretty, he pretty destroyed. Uh, that was, uh, that was the lightest, but this is the only damage that I'm showing that I was pretty close to that was near me that actually put me where I, in the area. Uh, the town in Neola is shut down. That is the town that is basically just about a couple miles that way. We had no idea that it was uh, that bad, that close. Everything around my area where my house is, where we live, we were fine. Uh, we didn't sustain a lot of damage, but uh, as you can tell, the poles poles are bent you can see this power line it's still they got blocked it off i'm not going to get any closer to that whoo it is frigid cold i can't believe we just had tornadoes so i'm going to try to go through this road and i'm going to get some video driving down the highway of all the snap poles down uh i'll cruise up top here and get uh some video of the house that was hit up here uh you'll see it in the first part of my video and we'll get some close-ups on this stuff where I'm traveling up this road. And this is where that tornado was right behind me the whole freaking time. 
uh, it's pretty uh, surreal. So let's get some video of that. I probably shouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to, even though those power lines are right there and this is all closed. Get my window down. You can tell us build a large tree done. Uh, yep, this is where I turned onto the road. That thing dropped right on top of that. Just smoked it. It's coming through here. And this is, uh, you'll see me drive past this house in the first part of the video. Uh, they got it pretty good. I mean, the foundations are still standing, but this is what we're dealing with. I mean, the trees are stripped, sheds were torn apart, stuff is just mangled. And little did I know that this stuff was, this stuff was just right behind me the whole time. Uh, and then that's the valley I was going through that I was talking about that I needed to, to get through real quick or else I was going to be in trouble. Sorry for the dirty windows, but uh, yeah, that guy's poop house just got destroyed. Here are the boys uh, up here fixing all the power lines. Trying to get this stuff up and running. They're all trying to get everything up and going. I'm going to try to beat this tractor. But, uh... There you go. Sorry if it's a little windy, but uh, they're rerouted power, so they're getting these people back up and running. But you can tell. There's the power line all ripped. See, I roll my window back up. Wrecky. Yeah, there's all the. There's all the power lines tore down. Just snapped them, guys. Snapped them clear off at the ground. I mean, that's some serious wind. That's some serious power. Just snapped them in half. I can't believe that this all took place just as fast as it did. It all happened within like, I swear, like 30 seconds. And 30 seconds is this thing just blew right past me. And they said, uh, in my last video, part one, I was talking about how this thing was traveling 85 miles an hour. So so the area that we're in right now, in this whole, this, the distance, just me measured distance, 85 miles an hour, we're talking about a span of like eight miles. So in eight miles, this thing just ripped through that area. I believe it picked, it's touched down picked back up, went over some fields and hit the town of Neola. We're driving past the town of Weston right now. That's where I make my turn onto the gravel road. And then I make my turn onto the paved road as a shortcut, as you saw in the first part of that video. And then that's where the damage started. So it touched down right there and then um, continued on to Neola. Now it took out a lot of stuff in Neola. It took out some pretty big buildings, but it wasn't plowing through stuff. What they were saying is that this tornado was basically hopscotching and touching down and just destroying stuff and popping back up. It wasn't a very large tornado. I'll probably put it as in like an F1 if at the at the most, at the most it's probably that big. Um, if it was anything bigger, you would then see like trails in the fields, which nobody's reporting on or anything. So that was my part two. I wasn't trying to hype it up. I literally thought, uh, I wasn't going to make it. I thought I made a grave mistake and I wasn't going to get through that, um, that area, that small patch right there, because I had known that I had made a mistake as, you know, I'm not as invisible as I thought it was. And 
you know, being in a car, you have false security. But when I hit that road, I was, I was terrified. I was scared for my life. I was terrified. I've never been in a situation where I could not see out the windshield and the car lifting and shifting. And I mean, I was driving maybe 10 miles an hour because I couldn't see the road, but I could just see a little sliver of the white line on the right side, maybe doing 10 miles an hour. And then it felt like I was driving a hundred miles an hour. And then the car, you know, when your wind gets underneath the car and you start feeling like your car is getting light, that's when I realized that this this rain, this washout that I'm experiencing right now may not be just heavy rainfall. It might be a, a tornado that's actually driving that rain and washing everything out, especially with the car moving. And the only thing I could do was just stop, get on the gravel where I could feel the gravel and then cut the car left and just turn around until I felt gravel on the other side of the road and just go. And that's what I did. I just went. The rain was a little easier facing uh, driving the opposite direction when I turned around because uh, it was on my backside. I can't explain why, but I was able to see the road enough to get to that gas station. The minute I pulled pulled into the gas station, literally just like shut off. It just shut off. I, I couldn't believe it. Um, and I really thought that was the calm before something hit. And that's when I decided to call home. So that's it in a nutshell. Uh, I will try to go to Neola and get some video. I'm running a little short on time. I'm on my lunch hour, but I'm pretty sure they've got that place locked down. But um, we'll go down there and, and, and see if we can find something because it's just right down the road. So be right back. So we're in the town in Neola right now. You can kind of see the destruction. Not getting really good photos, but that building is just leveled. It just took the whole building out, guys. Everything. Probably shouldn't be here. There's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of people, but uh, try to stay out of their way. But you can tell there's power lines. They're down. Got a news crew here. They're flying drones and stuff, getting the aerial footage of the damage, but I can't get really close where that tornado touched down, but it's like right over in here. Um, then you can see right there, just leveled all the industrial stuff. So, I mean, power lines is everywhere so they were op they at least they opened up the highway to uh get a view of all this stuff uh i'm not going to go in the neighborhoods because it's an absolute mess with big down trees and i'm not going to drive my car through that there's a lot of people working trying to clean this stuff up uh and help each other out i'm just not gonna be one of those folks that's in the middle of it causing uh, a ruckus or um uh, impeding progress so I'm just kind of right here where the news people are at. So we'll go from there. I mean, they had just destroyed everything. I'm trying not to get a flat tire in this, but. I just wanted to guys give you give you a follow-up real quick and just show you how close I was to this and how stupid I was to go out in it. Um, you are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. If I had anything to, to say about it, that I just wanted to express how dumb I was going out there like I did and don't do it. Stay at work. I mean, it's not worth going out there and trying to race home. I was trying to get to my family, but in the process. I could have been uh I could have been swooped up and and uh killed or injured or, or anything and it just wasn't worth uh dealing with that. So I appreciate you guys watching for part two. 
Um, if it wasn't as dramatic, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just showing you how it is and how close I was to it. So uh, I'll see you in the next episode, guys. Thanks. Thank you.